to have someone working for you who is so magnificent that you will, for the first time in your life, feel, I am so happy with my <laughs> member of parliament. I can't wait to go out and tell other people, that's my member of parliament. So with that, I want to introduce to you your next member of parliament, Lynn Corbin. <laughs> So um, my days are kind of full right now. 
Um, as a scientist, I really have for years been uh, painfully, I think is the right word, aware of the evidence for climate change. I'm aware that it's happening now. I'm aware uh, that it is caused by the fossil fuels that we are burning. And um, I know that, and you all know, there's changes that are happening around the globe right now, changes that are happening in our Salish Sea. Our cold water is absorbing carbon dioxide, it's becoming acidified. Uh, the shellfish larvae are not, de not developing properly, we're losing biodiversity at rapid rates, and we don't even know what all is happening because, as Elizabeth mentioned, we fired our environmental scientists. And the ones we have less left aren't there to, t to tell us. They're not reporting back to us. So I find this whole situation unacceptable. And because it's unacceptable, um, I don't accept it. I get out there and do stuff. I've been writing letters and meeting with my members of parliament and writing op-eds, and um, along with members of Broke and other people um, being sued by Kinder Morgan. And um, looking at my, my co-arrestee, Ruth, um, we rode the paddy wagon together. <laughs> um, I'm grateful um, to Ruth. And, um, but all of those things, I, you know, that's, that's pretty much it. As a citizen, there's not too much farther to go um, until Elizabeth May sends you a call and says, um, I need you in Parliament. <laughs> um, and I do. <laughs> So it's, it's, it's a big step. It, for me, it's a huge sacrifice. Um, I, love, I love my career. I love what I do. I love the science I do. Um, one of my favorite PhD students ever is in the audience with her baby tonight, <laughs> Laura Elton. Um, and uh, if anyone wants to know more about our research, if you can't corner me, you can corner Laura. Um, and it's always been a pleasure. And one of the great pleasures of doing research is to work with our graduate students. Um, and I just, I just, it's, it's really hard, um, really, really hard to, to consider the sacrifices of not doing that. But, the last few years when I go to give a science talk, usually we go speak for 50 minutes, that's what I'm used to doing, so no, I just kidding, I won't do that. <laughs> um, I reserve the last 10 minutes to talk about climate change. And I, and I always mention that, you know, I, I, I try to stay focused on my science, but when the science papers come in my inbox and there's something that would have really excited me to read it, I, it it's, the energy is not in the same place anymore because I'm so distracted by what's happening in our world. And um, so, I guess I'll tell my little story. It's hard to give two speeches in a, in a night because I'm so used to not wanting to repeat myself. <laughs> I'm going to repeat myself, up, but with apologies to those of you who are here twice. Uh, I, want to, I want to talk about November 14th, 2014, when uh, Justice Cullen uh, awarded the injunction to Kinder Morgan and, uh, against the protesters. It happens that on that very day, Philae, a little science robot, landed on a comet that is 590 million kilometers away. So that's six times as far away from Earth as the sun. And that comet was moving at 135,000 kilometers per hour at the time that we landed a little robot on it. So that's pretty amazing accomplishment. So if you have that in perspective and you step back and you say, okay, what's, what's, what's wrong here? We've got this climate thing, we've got this democracy thing. It's not rocket science. We can solve those problems. We can solve those problems. So why aren't we solving those problems? What's the big problem? So you step back and you heard from Elizabeth about the issues with democracy and the hyper-partisanship and the fact that we're not having debates in parliament and that votes are whipped and that the PMO's office is, or the PMO is controlling everything. And you have to say, okay, um, there's a number of things we can do. Um, and <laughs> it's really not rocket 